into gossip. <laughs> so, what is happening here at Wheaton? You see, I'm from Wonderland, and I don't really come to Wheaton often. So, does anybody know what's happening with King William? She knows. You know what's happening with King William? Tell, tell me all the juicy tea. <laughs> I do like my tea. What's happening with King William? Yeah, what, what's King William up to? The, the, the king of England. Yeah, he was like, I, I heard he was acting a little funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Um, so, for so, so, last year, I think it was, the, what's the other king's name? King last year. Um, last year, I think King Lee was trying to take over the kingdom. King Lee was trying to take over the kingdom. And Rumpelstiltskin was helping him. Rumpelstiltskin was helping him? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and King Will or King Lee? What? There's too many kings around here. Nobody can actually good tell them apart, right? King William is good, okay. but we uh, think something's going King on with him. William is still buddy, is still acting a little strange because he's buddy buddy. King Being Lee buddy, buddy. Yeah. Even though he, he tried to take over to the king. Okay. Oh my God. Uh, last year. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm late. I'm, late. I'm so sorry. Who are you? I'm. I'm the white rabbit. I got um. Hold up. <laughs> Too much stuff going on. She's late. I'm late. I'm always late. <laughs> but very important day. There we go. I got a um, invitation to the Very Merry on both day of one Mr. Mad Hatter, and I was told to bring cups, like I did. <laughs> no, 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 no! That's all wrong. The March Hare is supposed to come to my tea party. I distinctly remember it. Did, did you perhaps have the Cheshire Cat deliver the invitation? The, they're not the best sorts as a mailman. So well, like well. No matter, I suppose, as long as I have my teacups, I really don't care who comes. <laughs> a rabbit, hair, uh, dormouse. Yeah, you can come to my tea party. Sweet. Um, except, little girls named Alice. Little girls named Alice are the most dreadful abomination in all of Wheaton and Wonderland. It's wholly despicable. <laughs> oh, it, it's true. Alice once stole my pocket watch from me. I was almost late to the Queen of Pot procession. I almost lost my head. Well, anyway, now that you all are here, I suppose I need to tell you why you're here. And that is to celebrate my very merry unbirthday. You see, I used to celebrate my birthday. But then I was like, wait a second, that means I'm only throwing a tea party once a year. But now that I celebrate my unbirthday, I get to celebrate it 756 days a year. Wait, but. That's not how many days are in a year. 892 days a year. Okay, that's too much. You're going too high. Low, low enough. Anyway. <laughs> that's why we are all here. So, I think it's time to get some tea. Yes, yeah, so let's get all these party goers some tea. Anyone want tea? Anybody want tea? Tea? With the cup. I need some cups over here. Why don't you give cups over there? You have to have puzzle. Do you have your paper? Okay. We have to try it. Oh, can I have it? So it's out of order. Anyway, come up and get tea. We have sweet. You want some tea? Like, no, some tea? Peanut? Yes, please. What's the tea? You want sweet tea or ice cream? Sweet. Yeah, you want some tea back there? You guys want some tea? You want some tea? Let's go some tea. Yeah. Okay. I don't skip on no tea. You want some tea? You get some tea. Sweet. You want some unsweet? It's right there. Unsweet tea? Unsweet tea? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do I go up there? I guess. Oh, thank you. So, tell me what's your food. Sweet, you're in sweet. One more for lunch, sweet. Okay. 
Where are you building, sorry? Wait, that's the same one. Are you sweetie? Here we go. Are we ready? Ready for the balloon glue. <laughs> Come on, cheers. Sorry, right, we gotta see all the things. Oh, that's very easy. That's very easy. Anyone else want some tea? Good. Well then, <coughs> now that everybody has had their tea, what do you suppose we should do now, hmm. Mr. Rabbit? Well, Mr. Haddle, I think that we should tell stories of Wonderland. What a marvelous idea! Ooh. Why, I have some stories I hate right here! These are written by my very, very good friend, Mr. Lewis Carroll. He travels through Wonderland and documents all of his tale in the form of the poem. Because what else are you going to do with your life? <laughs> well, I hope that Lewis Carroll is a bit of a quack. He, outside of Oz, he is... Well, his stories seem... Less than logically reasoned. Nonsense! I have two of my very favorite tales from Wonderland right here, and they always make sense to me. The first one I will tell you is about a walrus and a carpenter. Two very good friends who have some questionable morals. <laughs> The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all of his might. He did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright. And this was odd, because it was the middle of the night. Does that seem right to you, the sun being out at night time? No, no, it did not. The moon was shining sulkily, because she thought the sun had got no business to be there after the day was done, which makes sense because that's the moon shower for you up at night time. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a little off track there. The sea was wet as wet could be. The sand were dry as dry. You could not see a cloud because no cloud was in the sky. No birds were flying overhead because there were no birds to fly. That makes sense, right? There's no birds and no clouds. You don't see them. The walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. They wept like anything to see such quantities of sand. <clears throat> if it were only cleared away, the carpenter said, it would be grand. If seven maids with seven mops swept it for half a year, do you suppose, the walrus said, that they could get it clear? I doubt it, said the carpenter, and he shed a bitter tear. Oh, oysters, come and walk with us, the walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. We cannot do with more than four to give a hand to each. The eldest oyster looked at him, but never a word he said. The eldest oyster winked at him and shook his heavy head, meaning to say he did not choose to leave his oyster bed. But four young oysters hurried up, all eager for a treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd, because, you know, oysters don't have feet. <laughs> four other oysters followed them, and yet another four. And thick and fast they came at last, and more, and more, and more. All hopping through the frosty waves and scrambling to the shore. The walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so. And then they sat upon a rock that was convenient below. And all the little oysters stood and waited in a row. The time had come, the walrus said, to talk of many things. 
of shoes and ships and sealing wax and cabbages and kings and why the sea is boiling hot and whether pigs have wings. Do you think pigs have wings? Do you think pigs have wings? No, but I saw a real thing that turned into a bear. Wow. Well, I thought oh, pigs I... had wings. But I, I guess I'm... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Man. Maybe just in Wonderland. But wait a bit, the oysters cried, before we have our chat. For well, some of us are out of breath, and all of us are fat. No hurry, said the carpenter. They thanked him much for that. A loaf of bread, the Wallace said, is what we chiefly need. Pepper and vinegar besides are very good indeed. Oh, wait, where am I? Oh. Now if you're ready, oysters dear, we can begin to feed. But not on us, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be a dismal thing to do. The night is fine, the walrus said. Do you enjoy the view? Oh, wait, and, oh, it was so kind of you to come, and you are very nice. The carpenter said nothing but cut us another slice. If you weren't so deaf, I'd had to ask you twice. It seems a shame, the walrus said to play them such a trick. After we've made them come so far and made them drop so quick. The carpenter said nothing but the butter spread too thick. I weep for you, the Wallace said. I deeply sympathize. With sobs and tears, he sorted out those of the largest size. And he took his pocket handkerchief and wiped his streaming eyes. Oh, oysters, said the carpenter, you've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But answer came there none. And it was scarcely odd because they'd eaten every one. Such a marvelous poem, don't you? But wait, how can the sun be up at night? And how can the walls talk? How can a rabbit talk? <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. But like, why did they eat all the oysters? And what was up with the carpenter? He gave me the creep. Ooh. I don't know. Ask Lewis Carroll. <laughs> anyway. I have a much shorter poem for you guys this time. It's about a valiant young boy who slays the most vicious of beasts. Can I borrow your sword? Oh yeah, I can borrow yours. That's all you See? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't blame you if this one didn't make a whole lot of sense. Lewis Carroll was kind of off the rocker on this one. <clears throat> Twas brillig, and the swissly tove did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the burrow gold, and the moms wrath outgrave. Beware the jabber walk, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jub jub bird, and shun the frumiest bandersnatch. Can you say bandersnatch? No? Can't say bandersnatch? Okay. You can? There you go, Bandersnatch. It's not the cartoon. He took his corporal blade in hand. Long time the maxim so foe he sought. So he rested by the tum tum tree and stood a while in thought. <laughs> and in the umpish thought he stood, the jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the toady wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through, and through, the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with his head he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? 
come to my arms, my beamish boy. Oh, Framtish Day, Kaloi, Kalei, he chortled in his joy. Twas brillig, and the thrifty toad did gyre and gimble in the wave. And all mimsy were the borough goes, and the moms rat out gray. Thank you. Wait, did the Jabberwocky actually die? What's a tum tum treat? I'm asking for, you know, everyone not from one land, obviously. And, um, what's guy on gimbal mean? Um, that is too many questions, and I do not know the answers to any of them. <laughs> Will you help? Well, yes. I. Time? Yeah. Oh, my! My ears are whispers. Look at the time. Hmm. Yes, you are quite right. It is rather getting late. This tea party is over. Ah. It's nice what tea there. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Sweet <laughs> the hail. Yeah. Okay.